Praise the Lord. I'm so excited today to welcome you to times of refreshing. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We begin this broadcast right now in your name. Honor us with your presence and Father, bless every listener all over the world and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, the subject we're looking at is captioned, Keep Your Marriage Strong. And it's my prayer that your marriage shall keep on going stronger by the day. In Jesus' name. Amen. By way of introduction, marriage is a blessing from God, ordained for man's enjoyment. However, like every of God's blessings, you have to take responsibility to access it. To keep your marriage strong, one very important area that you need to pay attention to is your character. Character represents a pattern of behavior that shows moral strength, self-discipline, and dignity. And of course, it's a known fact that a good character is not a gift. It's a choice. But it's the choice of the wise. Lack of good character can kill potentially great relationships. For you singles listening to me, wherever you may be right now, make sure that before you agree to marry anyone, whether you are male or female, you must study the character of that person. Somebody might say, oh, but how can I do that? Very simple. One way to do this is to watch how she or she treats others, how they behave when they are not watched, and the relationships they keep. I came across one Japanese proverb which states that when the character of a man is not clear to you, look at his friends. Another Danish proverb states, a man's character reaches down before his person. What an illustration. A marriage relationship can be one of the most rewarding experiences that two people can have, but not without good character. So, how important then is character to marriage, you may ask. Good question. The success of a marriage depends more on character than intellect. It's important to understand this very clearly. Character can either make or mar any relationship. The strength and future of a marriage lies in the character of the couples or couples to be that are involved. From scriptures, we find several examples to illustrate that. For instance, no doubt, David loved his wife, Micah, but her character negatively affected the marriage, which eventually led to her barrenness. Second Samuel 6. Have a neighbor, though a wealthy man, he was foolish, and his foolishness led to his death. First Samuel 25. Esther's good character gave her favor before the king and eunuchs, so the Jews were preserved. Esther chapter 2. Her but Ruth, her good character, especially towards Naomi, her mother-in-law, attracted her to Boaz. Ruth chapter 2. Same with Rebecca. Her hospitable character paved way for her to marry Isaac. Genesis 24. So it's very clear, as is popularly said, you can't make a good omelette out of bad eggs. Similarly, you can't make a good marriage with a bad character. Someone has said, and I believe this is very true, moral character is the DNA of success and happiness. So it's important to constantly examine and evaluate your character. Are you always aggressive, angry, moody, or temperamental? 
This can negatively affect your marriage. The apostles and scriptures testified of themselves. Second Thessalonians 3, 7. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. The question then is, can you or those around you give such testimony of your character? The great man of God, Billy Graham, stated, when character is lost, all is lost. Therefore, to keep your marriage strong, you need to constantly examine and improve on your character. And the good news is, like it's very clear, character is not a gift. It has to be built. And no matter how good your character is right now, you can improve on it. No matter how bad it is right now, you can improve on it. The truth is, character can be improved on. Of course, no one is perfect, but we are expected to keep making progress on a regular basis. Now, what are some of the character traits to build in marriage? Let me share a few of them with us at this point in time. Number one is kindness. Be kind, not cruel. Ephesians 4.32 states, And be ye kind one to another. Kindness is a behavior marked by acts of generosity, consideration, rendering assistance without expecting praise or rewards. For instance, you can show kindness to your spouse by giving support, rendering helping hand, and of course, expressing care. There are some couples that don't show care to their spouse at all. This is not expected. There are some people, they are kind to outsiders, but very unkind at home. Recently, I was speaking with an individual who came for counseling, and this individual was lamenting how unkind the spouse is at home, but outside, to outsiders, very, very generous. See, charity should begin at home. Your family shouldn't have a negative opinion about you. That will be unscriptural. Do your children go into hiding or literally hold their breath when you return home for fear of what to expect? When you return from work, do your family members become jittery? Don't be a tyrant in your home. Don't live a hypocritical life. Colossians 3.12 states, put on kindness. It is something we do deliberately. Kindness has to be done deliberately. Kindness is not a gift. It's something you put on, just like you put on your clothes and you put it off, just the same way you put off your clothes. To every listener, from this day forward, I pray for you, grace to be more kind to members of your family, than ever before, it becomes your portion from today in Jesus' name. Amen. The second character trait is integrity and honesty. Integrity and honesty is a state of truthfulness. A man or woman of integrity and honesty tells the truth no matter the circumstance. Honesty is what breeds trust in marriage. And this honesty always traps and catches up with its victim, but integrity preserves. Psalms 25, 21 tells us, let integrity and uprightness preserve me. This honesty is like a web. It entangles its victims until there's no way out. That's why one lie needs other lies to cover up. To strengthen your marriage, therefore, Always be honest with your spouse and family members. So, the question now is, how truthful, how honest, how reliable are you in your marriage? Nothing empowers like the truth. So, let your yea be yea and your nay, nay. It was Albert Einstein that said, and I quote, whoever is careless with the truth in small matters 
cannot be trusted with important matters. Can you be trusted? You can make changes beginning from now. Number three, very important, is self-control. 1 Corinthians 14, 40 states clearly, let all things be done decently and in order. What is self-control? It is a very, very vital aspect of one's character and it greatly affects the strength of your marriage. And indeed, it affects all areas of life, sexually, financially, your appearance, your words, your appetite, and the list goes on and on. Many have lost their marital destiny due to lack of self-control. Don't join the number. To have self-control, you must institute order to your life. Set boundaries and obey them. If you are disorderly, you will lack self-control. Now, let's take a few examples from scripture. Sexually, Samson, a one-man army, lost his eyesight and life to lack of sexual control. Judges 13. David, the great king, lost a peaceful reign to lack of sexual self-control. 2 Samuel 12. How about Amnon? He died of the same. 2 Samuel 13. So, learn to control your sexual desires. Create laws for yourself and live by them. Put your life into order. How about financially? Very important. You must learn to be prudent. Don't spend on impulse. Have a financial plan. For God's sake, the world is going through so much of economic and financial tension. Learn to draw a budget and stick to it. And of course, as it's been popularly said, cut your coat according to your cloth. The simple guiding principle that I use over the years is spend some, give some, and save some of anything that God puts into your hand. And please beware of covetousness. Many marriages are going through tension today because of covetousness, lack of financial control, spending on impulse. Remember Achan in the Bible and all his family, they died due to this, Joshua 7. Then of course your appearance also becomes important. Be disciplined. You can be fashionable without exposing private parts of your body that should be covered. Your outward appearance is a reflection of your inner person and your inner purity. Mark 5.15 tells of a story of a man that was possessed with devils, but after he was set free, the Bible says they found him sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Among other things, that tells us very clearly, your appearance is a show of the state of your mind. Dress the way you want to be addressed. Apply self-control. How about in your appetite? Control what you eat and drink. Because, of course, it's been popularly said, you are what you eat. Don't dig your grave with fork and knife. Eat your size per time. Drink your size per time. Wear your size per time. And then your future will be guaranteed. And then, of course, how about your words? This is very critical. Job 6.25 tells us how forcible are right words. Words are very powerful. They can strengthen or weaken a marriage. Learn to speak right words in your marriage. Beware of abusive words such as stupid, crazy, stubborn, good for nothing. You call your wife Mrs. Goat, your husband Mr. Goat? Of course, that means you are also a Mr. or Mrs. Goat. Learn to speak positive words because they produce positive results. Recently, a family was sharing and the wife was so touched because according to her, the husband was always using negative words on the children, his own children. Now the children are grown up, they are all married, 
So they don't even want to communicate with their father because of the way he's been speaking to them over the years. Beware of what you say because it has a lot to do with the strength or the weakness of your marriage. Remember, evil communication corrupts good manners. In the words of a man called Frank Outlaw, he says, watch your words, they become your actions. Your actions become your habit, and your habit become your character. Beware. And of course, number four, which is very, very important, is forgiveness. Ephesians 4.32 states, forgiving one another, even as God has forgiven you. Forgiveness is a virtue you should never leave out of your marriage. It was Martin Luther that said, a good marriage is a union of two forgivers. Forgiveness is the act of letting go wrongs, offenses committed against you. Of course, nobody is perfect. Unforgiveness is at the root of many marital challenges, including separation and divorce today. And the truth of the matter is, it destroys the peace in homes and gives room to bitterness and resentment. Are you holding any grudge against your spouse right now or any member of your family? Let go and let God. To be unforgiving to your spouse is to hold him or her in captivity. It doesn't pay. Unforgiveness is like an untreated injury of the soul, which can be very deadly. It can set in motion a cycle where small marital scuffles become large marital wars. You don't have to start waging war in your home, in your marriage. No, give no room to the devil. When the wounds in your heart are left untreated, of course, they often produce pain in other areas of our lives. Please take caution. Unforgiveness is a sin before God and a sin against yourself and your destiny. Is there anyone in your family cycle you are holding grudge against right now and you have refused to forgive? Right now as you hear this word, why not let go and let go? I can't forget a testimony of a woman that was believing God for the fruit of the womb. They had tried over the years and it wasn't working, so she was booed for an operation. Thank God for Christian doctors. Right there, while she was at the theater, before they started the surgery, the surgeon asked her, is there any member of your family or anyone indeed you are holding grudge against that you have not forgiven? She opened up and to the glory of God, she never needed that surgery any longer and God blessed them with children. So don't hold and put your destiny under captivity. Someone has said, forgiveness is like a sweet smell that covers our homes with a salvo of true love. Therefore, dear listener, stop keeping scores or reminding your spouse, family members, or other people of the wrongs done many, many years against you. Open up and let that wound be healed. Right now, as you are hearing me, if there is unforgiveness in your heart, I pray for the grace of God to be let loose right now into your life so you can let go and let go. You also will begin to see the difference in your life beginning from right now. As I conclude, please remember, good character strengthens marriages and vice versa. According to a Japanese proverb, Character can be built on daily routine. So begin from now. Many marriages have collapsed like a pack of cards because one or both spouse lack good character. Don't add to the number. Your case must be different. To keep your marriage strong, therefore, constantly improve on your character. Make a decision right now as I close this broadcast, to keep on improving on your character. If there is beauty in character, there will be harmony in your home. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever area of your life that the enemy has been sitting on to weaken your marital relationship, 
on the various issues and platforms we have talked about today, receive grace to take a stand against the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As I close, my question right now to you is, dear listener, are you born again? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Is he your heavenly father? Do you have a hope of eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Bow your heads right now. Pray this prayer after me. Say it out loud from your heart. Say, oh God, today I come to you. I'm a sinner. Jesus, save me. Make me your child. From today, I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said that prayer, you are now born again. Log on to the website address on the screen to fill the salvation form. And make sure you locate a Bible-believing church and start attending regularly so that your faith can grow and so you can make heaven at the end of your journey. Also, connect through the social media handles at the bottom of your screen and send your testimonies through the same medium. See you next time. And always remember, God is too faithful to fail. Amen. Amen.